Our very special guest on this edition of Citywide is Peter Yarrow, the legendary folk group Peter, Paul, and Mary. Peter has sung and shouted about issues that he cared about for many years, but he's also the founder of the not-for-profit organization Operation Respect. We'll speak with Peter first, and maybe there'll be a musical treat for us as well during the course of the show. Thanks for joining us. Peter, your music, your songwriting, your activism is well known internationally, but New Yorkers may be learning uh, for the first time today about Operation Respect. So tell us what it is and, and what's the mission of the organization. I, I will do that in a moment, but first I have to say, Puff the Magic <laughs> Dragon was happy to be here with you, Ken, my friend. Music is really what carries me through these years to this very end. You see, I think that music has the capacity to bring people together very powerfully, whether Peter, Paul, and Mary are singing. The answer, my friend, is blowing in wind at the March on Washington in 1963. But in school classes, if we have kids singing together along with curricula that uh, brightens their hearts, that reaches them in, in, their, in their gut, in their emotions, their social and emotional growth will, will change and then become not just educated in the brain but in the heart. That's what Operation Respect does. It's education of the heart and we're in 22,000 schools worldwide and in many countries beyond the United States. And it is perhaps my most proud and most exciting work of my life in personal terms. What, what, is it, what does it mean when you say you're in 22,000 schools? Is it a, is it a program? Is it a, a curriculum? What, what is it that you offer? Well, uh, Operation Respect is an advocacy organization, but it has a program. When I, when I became, see, my mother was a school teacher here in New York for uh, 30 years, most of her time was at Julia Richmond High School. I became um, a, a really by osmosis, by emulation, became a teacher too. And uh, I always, I always reali uh, knew that kids, but before they learn to hate and fear, can be opened in certain ways so that they don't necessarily follow in the footsteps of that anger and that retribution that's inherited. My mother knew this because she worked with a lot of kids who had grown up with a lot of anger in their lives. Some of the, the there were three schools at Julia Richmond and some of those uh, girls, there was an all girls high school, were from very, very tragically challenged circumstance. Well, in any event, the Don't Laugh at Me program of Operation Respect uses music, and the music opens the heart. I'll do a bit of our, sure. of, our, of our theme song, which is also the name of the program. It says, I'm a little boy with glasses, the one they call a geek, a little girl who never smiles, because I got braces on my teeth. And I know how it feels to cry myself to sleep. I'm the kid on every playground, the one that's chosen last. A single teenage mother trying to overcome my past. You don't have to be my friend, but is it too much to ask? Don't laugh at me, don't call me names, don't get your pleasure from my pain. In God's eyes, we're all the same. Someday we'll all have perfect wings. Don't laugh. Don't laugh at me. 
I'm the beggar on the corner. You've passed me on the street. I wouldn't be out here begging if I had enough to eat. And don't think I don't notice that our eyes never meet. Don't laugh at me. Don't call me names. Don't get your pleasure from my pain. In God's eyes. We're all the same. Someday we'll all have perfect wings. Don't laugh at me. I'm fat. I'm thin. I'm short. I'm tall. I'm deaf. I'm blind. Hey, Ken, aren't we all? Don't. Laugh at me, and and it goes on. See, in a way, it's the best answer to your question. What, I, what is Operation Respect? It is an organization that advocates through using unusual tools. This particular tool, the Don't Laugh at Me program, has been taught to a a group, a little um, team, from. 90% of New York's schools, you know, 800 and some schools, as a tool. Does it create a new world? Well, it, it's a good tool, but it doesn't do it all. It's so in, 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 a, in any given class that, yeah. that sang that song or heard that song, there are, who, who's the audience? Is it the kids in that class who are feeling insecure about themselves because they have some of the characteristics that you sang about? Or is, the, or is the audience for that song um, the kid that thinks they're above that, that, that maybe is a bully to the, to the others? Are you trying to get that kid to understand what it's like to be one of the others? Exactly. You're, you're right on all counts and more. It's also the teacher who, whose heart is open too. She also hears, you know, right. if I had a hammer, but we've got 50 songs, and the kids sing these songs together, and when they do, after you and I have sung, and we could. Uh, you haven't heard me sing. <laughs> well, it's, it's good. It's all singing is good. You're less likely to turn to me and say, Peter, I don't like you. Right. I, I, you know, you're not the right religion. Right. You're not the right kind of guy. Mm -hmm. we, we really shouldn't be talking. We're already together. So what we're talking about is a, um, a tool that uh, is unusual because it uses music and you can get this tool for free. I, I remember at one of our first board meetings, you've got to charge money for this. Otherwise, this organization will fall. I said, we will never charge. So this is available to schools or the, to families anywhere Any in the world? Any educator, anybody who's working with kids, school counselor, psychologist, children's psychologist, anybody in the world, we got to call. You go to operationrespect.org, www.operationrespect.org. I'll sing it for you. www.operationrespect.org, or you won't remember it. <laughs> remember, it used to be Rinso White. Yeah, it's Rinso. a jingle. Yeah, right? a jingle. It's a jingle. So in 1999, I think, you and Dr. Charlotte Frank, a yes. edu well-known educator, uh, sort of hit upon this idea. What, what prompted you to do this uh, in the first place? Well, I, w I worked with Charlotte before. She was then the head of curriculum and instruction at the New York Board of Education sure. when I first met her. And when I heard the song itself, my daughter brought me to it, uh, I was moved to tears. And then I presented to Paul and Mary. And then we all did something we'd never done before. We started talking about how we had felt, mm. uh, not just with directed towards us, right. but seeing other kids. This is the we shall overcome, the blowing in the wind, the if I had a hammer of the movement, which is essential. If we are going to uh, do what we need for this country and for the world, we need the kids to be educated, hearts to be educated. Right. It, their intellects are not going to get us 
out of some of the conundrums we're in. And how do you measure success? How do you know whether this program actually has a, a you know, lasting impact on the kids? In, for instance, in Israel, uh, we're now in Israel both in, the, uh, in Arabic and in Hebrew. They had four pilot schools for a year, and then they had a, a survey for the teachers. And the, now I just got a, a letter we're so proud of the work, it's proved to be very effective. We're going to 25 schools and we've got our own website. Now, the, the uh, um, American Embassy in uh, Tel Aviv has supported this monetarily and the, uh, the uh, Israeli um, uh, 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 education, um, what do you call it, the educational, not, not the not the Department of Education, Ministry of Education. Right. It took me a while, but I'm 73 years old, Ken. <laughs> I'm, I'm allowed one of these every television show. These are moments. So we know, we've had done studies on it, right. but there's something that's hard to quantify. You can quantify. Does it uh, lead to greater attendance? Yes. Do kids focus better? Yes. Do they treat each other more lovingly? Yes. Do the, are there fewer absences? Do teachers report that they are, they're happier? But the most important thing is hard to measure, which is not only just the way kids are behaving, but their feeling about each other and their feeling about their empowerment. Because this program, because it uses um, a, a curricula that uh, gives them a sensitivity to right. how it feels. Right, and they're not so much victims anymore if they feel out of place and they're not, you know, it's not the other if it's somebody who's a, a victimizer in other circumstances. Right, right. Well, and they also, they, they, they write a constitution of caring. Okay, what's that? That they, they, it's a, an exercise where the class decides what it wants to have in the classroom in the way of uh, put ups and put downs. They have something called uh, this, uh, it, it's, it's a figure, and inside are all the things that are good and loving, and outside the things that we don't want to be, and then they write, so this is, these are our objectives. So the kids almost define their own social norm of what's, 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 what behavior is acceptable. And That's right, and if they're in charge of that, rather than, see, if you want to deal with the horrific bullying that's going on, you have metal detectors and strict disciplinary measures and zero tolerance. It will, it will have the inverse effect. What you want to do is create an environment in which kids naturally have um, uh, mores that they develop where they say, we're not going to uh, bully each other. We're not going to call each other names. And this song, when it's played, for kids, it just opens them up. But there are other songs too. For instance, you should hear it in Hebrew. These it's a terrific and Arabic. You should hear they sing. Um, they sing. Um, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, Lord. This little these are songs that go on for universal. Yeah. We're going to continue our conversation with Peter Yarrow when Citywide continues right after this. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Welcome back to Citywide. We're speaking with native New Yorker, singer, activist, founder of Operation Respect, Peter Yarrow. Peter, um, one of the, I think, things that, that was a revelation to a lot of people was the notion that domestic violence um, was an all socioeconomic uh, uh, strata. It wasn't just poor people that were had violence in the home. It, it yeah, really could, right. could appear anywhere. 
What's your experience been with bullying? Is it the same kind of thing? Is it, are there bullies in every school or, or are there some environments that, that seem to create more problems than others? No, actually uh, it, it's across the board. And I think uh, it's, it's, to a large degree it's because the culture of bullying has become the nation's heartache. If you look at television shows, reality shows, kids are literally trained how to intimidate and humiliate other children by adults who get points for doing so. It's, it's a culture. In our, look at the way our members of Congress have been treating each other. Look at the way some of the policies right. in the previous administration were, were really bullying. And the way of talking about it, you know, is, is we're, going to, we're going to make this happen by forcing the person to do our will. Right. Is it girls, girls and boys also? Or? Yes, it is. And the, as a matter of fact, it's in certain ways, it takes even more cruel forms with girls because now with cyberbullying, uh, we are dealing with one young woman from Connecticut, a student, who appealed to us, and you can't throw all the starfish back, but you need to give your happy hands on. She was, all of a sudden, she had a fight with a friend, and instead of it being resolved, it turned into cyberbullying with her being called things, unbelievable things. How do you deal with it? You don't deal with it simply by making prohibitions. What you, you have, that's a good analogy with a prohibition mm -hmm. of alcohol trying to regulate people's behavior on that level you create a huge industry of crime and you and you create uh, a nation of scoff laws what you do is you create empathy this nation needs empathy it needs a, a way to look at its mistakes say I'm sorry rather than to have half of our people saying Oh, we've never done anything wrong. There's, a, there's an aspect of sort of a national discussion about bullying, I think, that yeah. hasn't gotten much attention. But I was, I've been struck by the number of incidents involving particularly teenagers that turn severely violent. And when the investigators look into the background of the young people involved, Columbine being a good example. Exactly. It's not just that the kids were, were taunted, but they were taunted about their sexuality, that they were accused of being um, uh, homosexual, although usually a choice of words that we wouldn't repeat right. on a yeah, public yeah, affairs yeah, yeah, show. Yeah, but sure. but it's, 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 it's sort of the bullies go to the heart of people's feelings about themselves, and then we wind up with these you know awful incidences of, of violence. And, and suicides, you know, you've seen that recently. But that aspect of it, you know, in terms of not just the fact that kids are being bullied, but what the bullies are saying to them, well, also, doesn't get as much it's discussion. A, it's a, the, the verbal abuse right. is as painful as physical abuse. You know, you're not uh, physically abused when you're cyberbullied, but there's a, there's a very, um, there's a Shakespearean quote. It says, good name in man and woman, dear my lord, is the immediate jewel of their souls. Who steals my purse steals trash to something nothing. It was mine, it is his, and has been slave to thousands. But he who filches from me my good name robs me of that which not enriches him and makes me poor indeed. If we take away our self-respect, we know this. In, in Asia, to march somebody through the streets in their pajamas, that's worse than throwing them into jail. Humiliation. So what what we have to do is grow a, a next generation. And we are in, in recently in um, Ukraine, for instance, with the Peace Corps, working with the Peace Corps and with the American Embassy. They've got incredible varieties of bullying there. We're in Hong Kong. We, it's everywhere, all, uh, all strata of societies. And what, what you say, well, how do we overcome this? And what are the effects? If we can have people respect others, care about others, reach out for them and feel they are close, then they will feel important themselves, not because they've acted out. Because we know from, I mean, I have a degree in psychology. We know that if a child cannot get the attention and the affection that they want through being loving and caring, 
they're going to act out ultimately. You, you have spent um, a very long period of time as an activist, uh, somebody, not just somebody who wishes for peace, but you've marched for it, you've, you've spoken for it um, in so many different forums. It, is this focus on young people because you've, you've, you've you know, because you don't think that you can actually persuade the adults to change their behavior? Very good question. I think that's part of it. We have cognitive dissonance with the, with the adults. If you believe that Jews are avaricious and blacks are stupid and Hispanics are lazy, you're going to teach that to your kids. And you're to change the, an adult's mind and heart is very difficult. But with kids, before they learn all this, look, 160,000 kids a day stay home from school, according to the American Association of School Psychologists, because they can't endure another day of torture. 160,000 kids a day. a day in the United States. This is a pandemic, but for every one of them, there might be a hundred or a thousand that said, please, I don't want to go to school, mom. We've got to realize that the primary thing we need in this nation, if we want good policies, we have to grow up kids who are generous, who have hearts, who think of themselves as being valuable for the same reasons we think we're valuable when we go to a hospice. I sing in a hospice. People, nobody's wearing their jewels. They're not talking about their killing in the financial markets. And they want me to sing a song to them. And I, and I do. I was just there the other day at Connecticut Hospice. And you know what song? They, they want to hear a lot, which is very dear to me because Mary is always with me these days. All my bags are packed, I'm ready to go Standing here outside your door I hate to wake you up to say goodbye But the dawn is breaking, it's early morning The taxi's waiting, he's blowing his horn Already I'm so lonesome, I could cry so kiss me and smile for me Tell me that you'll wait for me Hold me like you'll never let me go Cause I'm leaving on a jet plane Don't know when I'll be back again Oh babe, I hate to go now, if you have kids in, in summer camps singing together and they have that camaraderie, we need that kind of spirit. Where have these songs gone? Where are the new Peter, Paul, and Marys? We need more of these kinds of songs sung. We need our kids to feel like a community and to create a next generation of caring, not just bright, but caring. And by the way, they get better marks and do better if their hearts, social-emotional learning, evolve as well. My thanks to Peter Yarrow, Peter, Paul, and Mary, but founder of Operation Respect. I'm Ken Fisher. Thank you for joining us on this edition of Citywide.